I, I'm going to have to get that recording afterwards because that's a really good description of what we do and it's better than the one that I, I normally say myself. I just got asked how I was feeling about speed of light and the, and the recent changes that have happened in the press around speed of light and I said, I'm not a scientist. I, I don't know. It's a different type of speed of light that I'll be talking about. So uh, the way that we've interpreted speed of light is actually about running and about the particular use of um, Wonderful Hill in the centre of Edinburgh, or small mountain, known as Arthur's Seat, a place that has been inhabited for millennia, and in particular has an amazing path network that has been established over hundreds and hundreds of years. And I got very interested in a, a little section of path network that comes off the sunken basin that runs down off Salisbury Crags, where all the lines seem to fuse into one point and radiate out. So it almost has the feeling of an eye when you look at it from a particular angle. And I got interested in that path network and how we might, if I can, my click is going to click. It is clicking. How we might begin to animate that path network through the act of running. And the running that I'm interested in is endurance running. And I'm in interested in how runners perceive themselves, why we run, and what happens to the body and what happens to the mind, particularly when you commit to the harder end of running in the sense of distance running, endurance running, and hill running. Because you very quickly find out, any runners in the room? That's a, that's pretty, a, a pretty, pretty good handful. Um, I must say, when we, we had a first debate uh, around why we run, and I, I put an interesting group of people together, some runners, some doctors, some scientists, and it very quickly became clear at the start of the conversation that a, a sort of bulk of the people said, we want to have a debate about why we don't run. <laughs> and you very quickly realised that there were the proselytizers, the proselytizers for the sweaty <coughs> masses, and those for whom it was an absolutely alien, tedious, boring experience. And the idea of going like that is just the equivalent of a sort of a cringe-inducing moment, where, whereas for me to go like that for an hour on end, I'd, I'd lose the will to live. It's very interesting how personal our relationship to exercise is and, and why we choose a particular form and not others. But the form that I've chosen to make a work about the name of which is Speed of Light, is looking at endurance running, and particularly, you quickly realise it's about your relationship to pain. It's about your capacity to deal with pain, to override pain, to embrace pain, because it takes you somewhere. Because well, there, there are many, many, many cliches about running. If you run, one of the things that I've always felt is that Whatever mental state you are in at the start of the run, you will not be in the same mental state by the end. And strangely, or perhaps not strangely, 80 or 85 percent of those runs, your mental state will have somehow improved. Some space will have come into your sense of self. And that means that you can sometimes run in a state of anger, and find that by the end of that run, 30, 40 minutes, or an hour, or two hours later, some sense of that anger has dissipated. You can run inwardly in the sense of a particular problem that has been bugging you or just floats up into your consciousness through the act of the breathing and concentrating on the moment. Your brain finds a different way of dealing with that problem. Or otherwise, it can just be about the observation of nature and the world around you. One of the things I really like is the, is the way that if you run the same route again and again and again, and I mean hundreds of times, you begin to pick up on when a particular flower appears, when the leaves fall, just, just those interrelationships between weather and nature, particularly in urban settings. It doesn't have to be in anything as, as uh, romantic uh, as this particular setting. But the speed of light then, 
is thinking about why we run on a very individual level, but because I make work that deals with mass and deals with, with mass issues, we decided to try and explore running on a much wider level by putting a group of runners together, in this case 4,000 runners, many of whom have never been in the hills before and are training up from a, a very basic level to be able to work comfortably in this setting in the summer. And the act of, I'm describing it as an act of cooperative running because I was interested in doing something in the context of the Olympics that was not about winning. That was one of the, one of the great things about uh, being a runner and competing, which is another part of, of uh, that, that many runners do eventually take part in, whether it's a 10K, a half marathon, a marathon or beyond. You absolutely know that you'll never be first. You absolutely know you'll never be last. You'll be one of those people stolidly bashing it out in the middle. But it's a kind of good place to be. It's okay, you don't feel bad because you're not winning, you're not getting a medal. There's just this sense of doing, taking part, and the personal satisfaction that that particular commitment gives to you. But here, of course, there's no medal. The, the, the thing that we're creating, you can begin to see here that there are various figures dotted throughout this landscape. We decided to work with a Hollywood choreographer who normally does crowd scenes and to animate that landscape through creating a choreography through paths of runners working through the landscape. It's a very, very cooperative act because it requires people to set, stay spaced out in 10 to 15 metre blocks and for a series of run leaders, of which there are 30, to learn a choreography and then to take people who've got no experience of running in that hill at night in all weathers and to work in a set amount of time working around the path networks to create, ultimately, a series of visual effects that can communicate some aspect of what it is to be human in this world and to manifest energy in this particular way. And our way of doing that is to, is to basically articulate the human body and particularly the joints and the key, the key points that move as we run um, with a quite clever use of LEDs. The reason why it's clever is that we asked the question at the beginning, can we generate all of our energy through human movement? Uh, it's a holy grail called energy harvesting, uh, which many of you will heard. There's been lots of uh, uh, articles about it uh, over the last 10 years. And I started actually with Simon and, and uh, some, some, some of his great uh, um, team working at the Science Festival and I put together our designers with them and we began to explore in depth how much energy we could generate through the act of running. We went to see Trevor Bayliss down in Eel Pie Island who had a shoe that he'd created that he was looking at impact that he'd strangely abandoned after the shoe bomber uh, uh, you know got caught trying to blow up the plane but he's quite an eccentric character that put him off the idea. Uh, we looked at military applications, which of course are always ahead of the game, and particularly there was a bionic um, <coughs> knee brace that was being developed by Canadian military, and through this action here it was generating a small amount of power that could be transferred then, you know, th through a system to create an LED pulse. They were costing about $1,500 per knee, so we're beginning to talk about a £3,000 kind of running thing, and it just it didn't seem the right way to go. And in the end, of course, this would be for the military to be able to recharge a phone or something in the desert when they're out shooting people they shouldn't be shooting. So we didn't go down the military line. But we did develop a, a system, actually, that's partly um, shown out in, in motion, which is, is using a, a basic dynamo system, using this as being the most dynamic movement that, that the body will produce while running. Um, you can see the lights sit here. Can we take a poll on how much energy this system would produce for us in terms of the light effect here? I want to see how positive or not. Uh, 70 to 100 percent of the power required? 50 to 70 percent? Bulk. Uh, 30 to 50 percent? 10 to 20 percent? 5 to 10 percent? 0 to 5 percent? The amount of power that we got from it was 
you're, you're, I like it, you're all optimists. The idea is far outstripping the reality. So after a year and a half of trialling this, and then the reality was, and I mean, I kid you not, we put on the first running suit and we, we got the dynamos, which were sort of strapped to your hips here, and it was really clunky, and started running. And you would have to have been a kind of Olympic weightlifter to get the arms. It was like you were having, and of course, the, you need the talk, you need the actual effort to make it work. It wasn't, so I didn't mind, it's great, we're generating the <laughs> It was like, like this. After about five minutes, we realised it wasn't going to work. And therefore, it would be absolutely tokenistic to say that we were energy harvesting. I mean, most people here would probably agree that greenwash, you know, it doesn't just stop with the oil firms who are attempting to tell you how fantastic their credentials are and, and how they're saving the world. It's a, the, the equivalent in the arts organisation would be for us to say that we were energy harvesting. So we cut that and... In fact, we developed a separate system working with the Faraday principle, I think the same one that's used in the wind-up radio, just through the movement um, over a magnet. And that generated a very, very interesting flickering LED effect, which is probably about 0.7% of the power we required. But the interesting thing was that in artistic terms, it delivered something really interesting visually. Uh, it really worked for us. So in the end, we went very trad, small battery pack on the back, as small as we could make, and wireless remote technology speaking to each suit so that you can control <coughs> from 0 to 100% flash rate and the actual, uh, probably a range of 1,000 um, colour gradations, which means ultimately we have an amazing level of control that we can work with. Visually, it's great. This, of course, just using time-lapse time um, photography, which is really nice in terms of creating these trails. And the thing that got me really interested about this idea of human en energy manifest as light and life manifest as energy is the idea that the patterns, as they're seen, when you see it from ground level, it remains relatively mundane. You still see the act of runners running in light suits. But... Each night during the festival, an audience of, of 800 people, and we've created separate um, light poles for them, so they create their own lines of light as well. And as you go to the summit and look down, the human aspect becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you don't really see runners, you just see dots of light. And those then become just patterns of energy. And it it was very, very interesting to see that you could sometimes create an effect that might be working on the same scale as the, a stellar image, and then you could go right down into a, par a particle image, where it, where it might be the movement within a much smaller a, a, a micro landscape, And the mind can shift between the two at night. And we could, with light, work through these different patterns and the way different patterns of light might manifest. And that's the work that we're engaged with just now and working towards that. But I kind of felt, and I often do this um, within my work, I thought, this is one way of seeing the world. And there's a massive t tendency of any of us, particularly in the West, to have a, a particular sense of self. And I, I here have, have shared very, very briefly certain ideas of endurance and how we work with our bodies and the sense of self. I've got two minutes, so I'm going to sum this up fast. So I went to India, and I went to Govardhan, and the main Krishna mountain there, the, 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 the center of uh, Krishna worship in India. And this mountain has been revered for over 2,000 years, and there's a pilgrimage of 21K, a half-marathon pilgrimage that takes place around that mountain, uh, every day of the year. And here you can see someone, they go on their knees with a mat and work their way, sometimes taking five days. Sometimes in the case of <coughs> particular programs will take two or three years to work their way around that mountain as a form of uh, and a celebration of allowing the divine into their life. And I was interested just to see, 
and to try and understand how endurance and how the use of the body is manifest from a completely different culture. And what I realised here is rather than a sense of self coming through the body and the act of moving your body around uh, the mountain in this way, that here the body was only being seen as a covering for the soul. It was the journey of the soul that was important. And actually, ordinary people with no notion of fitness would dedicate years of their life to performing this act as a form of self-purification, as a way of opening their soul up to what, in their minds, Krishna represents, a sense of love or a sense of life or a sense of the divine in life. And therefore, the covering, the coating of what we have is carrying consciousness or life or energy as it is manifest across the whole world. And that is a complete different sense of self and a complete different use of the body. And I thought, what a great, what a great kind of comparison to work between the two. I'm not sure how this will manifest within the work yet, but I think it's always interesting just to work from different perspectives than your own and to challenge your sense of self within what you do. Because this is another great way that humans manifest themselves in the world and express their energy. Thanks for your time. <laughs>